Yes, sir. Hey everybody, welcome to Dad Talk. Today we are at CPAC 2021 here in Dallas, Texas, and I'm with Representative Mo Brooks. Representative, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yourself? I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm a United States Congressman from the state of Alabama. I was elected in the Tea Party wave in 2010, and the Republican primary uh, was able to unseat an incumbent party switcher. We got outspent about 2.5 million to 160,000, but still prevailed, becoming the first Republican elected in Alabama's fifth congressional district in 136 years. Oh wow, that is amazing! You know, Representative Brooks, a lot of what we talk about here is the breakdown of the nuclear family. I really feel like that has become a target, uh, even more so here in the uh, the past few years. And the fatherless issue is out of hand. Why do you think that that is such a target, especially for the left? Well, I'm going to blame it entirely on the policies of the socialists and Democrats, now socialist Democrats, okay? Uh, you started, I think, with the breakup of the family in the 1960s, where we started paying people money to be divorced. We started paying people money to have children out of wedlock. And no one should be surprised that when you start putting money into the birth of children out of wedlock, you have more and more births out of wedlock. Then you've got the change in the divorce laws. It used to be that the law said kids are paramount. So there has to, there have to be substantive reasons for a husband and a wife to get a divorce. But we shifted that to no fault and just said in effect to the kids, tough luck, you're on your own. Good luck with how this works out. But generally speaking, kids do better in a two-parent household than in a single-parent household. I don't know how a single person raises children and has a job and keeps it all together. Right. That's a very, very difficult thing. It's probably not something I could have done. I compliment those single parents who are able to do it, but the best kind of nuclear family is one where the father and the mother stay together and they love their children together and they work together as a family with the delegation of responsibilities, bringing in the money on the one hand, uh, taking care of the household on the other. However they want to delegate it is fine with me, but the nuclear family is what's the best place for raising our kids. I love that so much, uh, Representative Brooks. You know, you, you talk about the issue of no-fault divorce. That's one that doesn't get uh, talked about enough. What are some of the consequences you believe that came along with that? Well, you know, if, if you've got a husband and a wife and no kids, I think that's better suited for a no-fault divorce. But when you've got children, then you have an obligation to those children and you need to put the children first and your personal whims second behind the lives of those kids that you brought up. My wife and I, by way of example, we've been blessed, uh, but we've also had four children that we raised. Those four children married four good people. All eight of them have college degrees. All eight of them have incomes. They blessed us with 10 grandchildren with three more on the way, okay? That's the way it's supposed to be in the United States of America. But unfortunately, so many people are missing out by getting into these circumstances where they forget about the reason why they married the person that they married. They are not willing to forgive and forget, which is often the case, because when you're raising kids, there's a lot of stress sometimes, okay? And sometimes you as a mother or a father are gonna say some things that you wish you hadn't said. But the key is the apology and the key is the forgiving and forgetting so that you can work together to make sure that those children are raised in the uh, uh, proper environment. So I very, very strongly believe in that kind of household. And the laws that diminish the prospects of a marriage being successful, we need to revisit, reevaluate, and change. I love it. You know, Mr. Brooks, I was a single dad. I ended up in a divorce and I had custody of my two daughters and I raised them the best I knew how. That's it, hard. It is. I mean, it, it can and it was very challenging. Did you have now, a job? I did have a job. Now, how hard was it when you got home from work when you're already tired to get the kids to do their homework? On top of that, working 14 I mean, you, to you, 15 hours a day and then raising these two girls. And then I got in another relationship and I, I ended up on the other side. I wanted to be in my daughter's life and then I find out what goes on inside a family court. The first one I pay $400 an hour uh, just for him to tell me it was cheaper to keep her. I go to the next one, he's like, you got a great case, I can help you get your kids, I need $10,000 from the retainer. Now for that single father that has fighting his hardest 
to see the amount of money that they're wanting just to get inside of your child's life, I think this is a part of the fatherless angle that is not being discussed. A lot of times in the fatherless angle, they talk about the dads that just abandon their kids. Of course, it's a $55 billion a year industry. When you talk about the laws that are needing to get changed, I think we need to look at some of that legislation that is kind of hitting some of these guys kind of hard inside of family courts. Um, I'm curious, outside of some of the things that we just talked about, what are some solutions that you think we could do, not just with divorce, but as a whole, to really start to put that nuclear family back together? Well, what we need to do first and foremost is eliminate all the federal policies, particularly the subsidies, for the breakup of the family unit. That's number one. Or, not just the breakup, but the prevention of the family unit ever becoming a unit in the first instance with these out of wed uh, childbirths. Having said that, though, I'm also a firm believer in the Tenth Amendment, states' rights. Each of these issues need to be addressed at the state level, not at the federal government level. Do I have some ideas? Absolutely. I used to be a state legislator. But I don't want the federal government mandating a one-size-shoe, fits-all-feet kind of solution, which is all too often what happens at the federal government level. So states need to revisit this and decide how best to handle it. One thing you can do is perhaps get the word out on the challenges you faced, and if people understand those things, perhaps they'll treat their spouses better rather than go through the kind of challenges and difficulties you and others go through when they face the divorce, they face the legal bills, they face all the things that they don't want to face. If they understand that from the beginning, then I think that you'll see a lot more marriages stay together. Um, I'm with you. It seems like now divorce is the first option when couples hit a snag. You know, as a pastor's son, I saw my mom and dad. There was times they didn't want to be in the same room together, but they stuck with each other. And let's be honest, that happens in marriage. There's times you just don't even want to be in the same room. But that's when marriage counts the most. Well, my wife and I, we've had some knockdown, drag out disagreements. Uh, it's the nature of living with another person because you may have different things you want to do or different ways to raise your children. But being married means a commitment. It means that you overcome these types of things. And sometimes they're hard, but you have to do it. Yes, sir. And you know, I, I agree with you. It does need to be done at the state level. But just to give you a little insight about what, we, what we've been going through, just here a couple of months ago in the state of Texas, there was 200 parents that showed up to the Capitol to get some type of legislation that even the playing field and divorce and said, Mom and Dad are equal. You both pull the weight. You have, you have equal responsibility. 200 parents that showed up. 10 people showed up to oppose it that belonged to the Texas Family Law Foundation. At the end of the day, this bill just got completely blocked, and we have seen the same thing going all across the country. Arkansas actually passed it earlier this year. And you know what the there. solution is? What's that? Those people and their friends and like-minded ones, they get active in politics, they contribute their time and their money to get behind a candidate who shares their values, and if they can't find a candidate that shares their values, then they need to run themselves. I I'm with you. It, That's the way you change the law. That's the way you impact public policy in the United States of America. If you can't find folks who believe like you do, then by golly, put your name on the dotted line and run for public office. And I'll give you this one admonition. The worst thing that can happen is you win. Well, you know, I, I hear a lot of times, this person is not talking about this issue. They're not talking about this issue. Well, you know what? They're running on what they believe. You need to get in there and do it. And just, it takes a fearless person to get in there and do just it. Just do it. That's it. Just do it. That's it. Mr. Brooks, I appreciate your time My so much. Tell everybody where they can keep up with you. I'm Mo Brooks. I'm a congressman from Alabama's 5th Congressional District. That's the Tennessee Valley, the birthplace of America's space program, Huntsville, Alabama. And if you want to help my run for the United States Senate, please go to MoBrooks.com. That's MoBrooks.com for a fighting conservative in the Senate where, quite frankly, we don't have enough conservatives. Hey, guys, I love it. Get out there and visit Mr. Brooks again. Thank you my so pleasure.